As we spend more and more of our lives online, digital spaces become increasingly important, and their First Amendment rights exist in a digital space just as much as they exist in the real world. So if we don't draw a line in the sand now and say, no, these are our rights, we'll eventually move into a world where we're locking ourselves out of these spaces. First Amendment law protects something called a public forum. A good example of this is when your city officials hold a town hall meeting in the gym of a school. What's really interesting is that we're seeing more and more that these town halls, they're not in physical spaces at all anymore. They're online. That's a really good way to connect with voters and constituents. But as a politician, you have to remember that when you start using a social media page that way, you're no longer just you, a private citizen, tweeting your cat videos out. You're a public official turning it into a space where you're opening it up to discussions with the people. So you can't block users who are critical of or delete posts that disagree with some of your policies. The thing about these questions is that this is a really really brand new area of law. The first cases just came up in the past couple of years. One of the most notable ones is Knight v. Trump. This case was brought on the behalf of some Twitter users who were blocked by at real Donald Trump after they tweeted back some critical things at him. The argument the Twitter users made was that President Trump had turned his account into a public forum and that he was banning people based on their point of view. Among the arguments that Trump made was that the contents of at real Donald Trump were government speech. So the public doesn't have a right to interject. A federal district court heard this case and found in favor of the blocked Twitter users that banning people from being critical of the president was a violation of the First Amendment. Uh, it's now on appeal and will be heard by the Second Circuit Court of Appeals sometime in the future. When cases like these come up, a lot of people, their knee-jerk reaction is, well, this is kind of silly. Okay, so some Twitter users were banned from at real Donald Trump. But this is a major shift. We're very used to thinking of your social media presence as something you can curate. But once we've got a politician communicating with the people that he or she serves, then we've got to think of it as less, oh, this is the, the nice curated image of the government and more, this is a place where people can speak about their issues and it won't always be curated and it won't always be pretty, but that's what, uh, that's what democracy means and that's what the First Amendment protects.